Welcome everyone to the Gaming for Good Philanthropy as a Business Strategy session. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today. And before we jump into the topic, we thought it would be helpful for Derek and I to introduce ourselves. My name is Dan Widner and I'm the Vice President for the West Region of the American Cancer Society and co-creator of our Gamers Versus Cancer program. I lead the execution of our enterprise-wide vision, direction, and strategy through major gifts, corporate accounts, distinguished events, and innovative solutions, where each of our departments have revenue-targeted goals that we set and work to achieve to actually help support our mission efforts. I'm very excited to be here to talk to you today about the work that a team and I are doing in helping to lead the fight against cancer within the gaming industry because I myself have been an avid gamer from a very young age. I've known, I, I've now been able to blend a lifelong passion with the ability to support a mission and a cause that is very personal to me, given that my family has been significantly impacted by cancer. And now I'll turn it over to Derek. Thanks, Daniel. Hi, I'm Derek Morton. I'm CEO of Flowplay. Flowplay is a group of 60 people in Seattle. We make uh, casual MMO games. Our most successful games are Vegas World, Casino World, and Our World. These are virtual worlds where people from all the world get together. They have an avatar. They run around. They have parties. They go to restaurants. They play games together. Uh, we have about half a million monthly active users. So during today's presentation, we're going to cover the following. You're going to hear from Derek on how Flowplay has approached working with charity partners in the past and the process that he took as a company in finding the right nonprofit to work with. I'm going to talk a little bit about the mission of ACS and give you some insight on why and how we ended up creating the Gamers Versus Cancer program. Derek is gonna cover the creation of the partnership between Flowplay and the American Cancer Society, talking about how it is that our teams collaborated on the project itself. I'm gonna then go into the impact that the gaming industry has had on social good and give some insight on why others might want to support nonprofits across the world if you haven't already done so. Derek is then gonna go into detail on the specifics of what the activation actually is and what the teams ended up creating together. We will also cover how you can get involved, talking about some action items and some next steps that you can take to immediately drive social good through your line of work. As this presentation is going on, Derek and I are going to be monitoring the chat, answering any questions that you have. We also dedicated some time at the end to allow us the ability to go through and answer any questions that we might have missed. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Hi, well, I'll tell you about how Flowplay started getting me into a charitable giving. Um, it started with a couple world events where there was a, uh, a earthquake and tsunami in Japan. There was an earthquake in um, Nepal. And so there was an interest in the company to sort of like do what we could to sort of send money to, to support those causes. And to do that, we reached out to our players. We created elements in the game that they could, uh, that would help them contribute to that fundraiser. And then we wrote a check and, and sent it off to the different relief organizations in Japan and Nepal. Um, we, we got so much interest in that from our players and from our uh, employees as well that we decided we would, we would make this kind of uh, more structured. We started budgeting for it in our yearly planning, uh, setting aside what portion of our revenue uh, and profits we would uh, apply towards charitable giving throughout the year. Uh, so we started setting aside this money and started looking for, you know, nonprofits to, to fundraise for. Uh, we found a great organization called the Girl Start, a group called Homes for Our Troops, which builds houses for, for wounded vets, uh, people that were working with human trafficking rescue. Uh, we built makers labs for underprivileged schools, all kinds of stuff, but we were kind of, uh, it was kind of random. We would hear about a charity and say, oh yeah, let's pick those guys. And we would go uh, write them a check and, and uh, you know, maybe go volunteer some hours as well. Uh, so things were still a bit ad hoc. 
Uh, but in 2018, we decided to take a much more structured approach. Uh, not only did we set aside money in our budget, uh, but we thought that we would really hone in on what do our customers and what do our employees uh, support? What, what would they like to see as support? How could we really get everyone involved and excited about being part of doing fundraisings for charities? Um, so we started with some community surveys. We started surveying our players, uh, asking them, you know, what's, what's touched your life? Who do you contribute money to? Uh, what, what's, what's, the, what's of interest to you when it comes to philanthropy? Uh, and we did the same thing with our employees as a group. Uh, and we met together and th just talked about, you know, what, what would you love to, be, to get behind as a, as a fundraising event and, and for flow play to be part of? Um, and we, we, you know, we really run into research, like what would really have the greatest impact on our community? So after, after you know, talking to our community members, talking to our employees, we, uh, cancer kept coming up again and again and again. Uh, our players are primarily women and primarily women over 50. And for them, uh, uh, either through friends, family, or them personally, cancer had touched many of their lives. And it was a recurring theme throughout some of the surveys and some of the, the, the conversations I had with the players. Uh, so knowing that cancer was an important issue for our players, we started doing research on, you know, who is making the biggest impact uh, who is a really great organization to work with uh, and has, uh, you know, the, the majority of their fundraising going towards actually helping people. Uh, through all this research, going to Charity Navigator, looking through uh, what, what can cancer charities were doing their best work, we came across uh, American Cancer Society, uh, and it's been great for us. We, uh, they're very well recognized, uh, both in the research area and the amount of money that goes to the actual work of, uh, of curing cancer and helping people that have cancer. Uh, so we were very excited to find them and begin to form a partnership with them. So to expand on uh, what Derek was just talking about, so the American Cancer Society is a national nonprofit with the sole mission of saving lives, celebrating lives, and leading the fight into a world without cancer. I provided a few key statistics on the slide that you can see to showcase the impact that cancer has had on so many individuals. As you can see, one in three people within the United States will be diagnosed within, with cancer in their lifetime. Globally, in 2018, there are more than 17 million cancer cases and 9.5 million cancer deaths worldwide. By 2040, the global burden is expected to grow to 27.5 million new cases and 16.3 million cancer deaths, simply due to growth and aging of the general population. In the past few months with the COVID-19 crisis, our mission and services have become even more vital for cancer patients, many of whom are already, already have a compromised immune system and are more vulnerable more than ever. To combat this, we have had to shift our needs for cancer patients and communities facing the pandemic. We've added video conferencing to our 24-7 cancer helpline and provided valuable information to, and guidance on cancer.org in order to help keep patients safe and well-informed. We've also continued our efforts to fund critical research, as Derek had mentioned. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has had a tremendous impact on the ability for labs not only to remain open so that they can continue the research, but also in the ability for organizations to actually be able to fund them. Like many nonprofits, we are doing everything that we can to continue our efforts to, research, to fund researchers during this challenging time. And if we don't, the long-term effects could be significant. Lastly, we are working to promote health equity and ensure equal access to cancer research, education, screenings, and treatment for all individuals. The American Cancer Society and American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, or as we call them, ACS CAN, are committed to addressing the unequal burden of cancer by reaching individuals in underserved communities in collaboration with community partners through our advocacy work. This, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because anytime that you work with a nonprofit, their central core 
mission is going to be what it is that they are driving from a social good perspective. Whenever you communicate with them, their mission is always going to be top priority. It's the main reason that they create partnerships. You know, we're looking to expand not even from not only from a fundraising perspective, but also drive awareness in anything that we do. And so I wanted to give you some context in terms of why we are here, why we are helping drive social good. That is our mission is our core value. And so all of these are reasons why opportunities like the engagement through our Gamers versus Cancer program are so vital in us allowing to support that critical mission. Last year, myself and Maya Alistaz were able to create the Gamers versus Cancer program. We have been having success through partnerships within the gaming industry, which is how the program actually got started. Organizationally, we strategized on how it is that we could maximize our partnerships through a more unified approach versus kind of a, a segmented one based off of just individual partnerships. The ultimate goal of our program was to be able to help partners achieve their own goals and to support our mission, not only, as I mentioned before, through fundraising, but also in driving awareness within the gaming industry. The program itself focuses in on engaging the industry within the five areas that you see on the slide. The first is partnerships. So looking at how it is that we can engage you know, software, hardware, and esports corporations, uh, our partnership with Flowplay is actually a great example of how it is that we've partnered with a game developer to work on an activation to address both what I mentioned, helping to raise funds and drive awareness. Second is streaming. We've had great success in live, uh, live stream fundraising with content creators to support our mission through charity streams that they host. Creators like Little Simsy and Greg Miller, or AKA, you know, Game Over Greggy from Kind of Funny Games have collectively helped us raise hundreds of thousands of dollars, which leads to events. We've hosted our own and partnered with other nonprofits to host in-person and digital, nowadays much more digital, uh, gaming events, and have also been chosen as the charity of choice through esports tournaments like the recent PUBG charity showdown event. We've also engaged through digital platforms. We have been featured as a beneficiary on uh, multiple bundles through Humble Bundles platform in partnership with developers like EA and Bandai Namco. These platforms alone have helped raise millions of dollars over the last five years to support our mission. And lastly, we've expanded opportunities through merchandise collaboration. You know, we looked at how it is that we could create specific merchandise with a partner, maybe aligning it with a awareness cancer month, or even in alignment through an event or a digital activation that we create. We are by no means the only nonprofit partner who has been working with uh, in the gaming community to support their mission, some of which have been doing it much longer than us, while others, I can tell you, are just now starting to create strategies and are looking to see how it is that they can not only engage their existing constituents, but even the community as a whole. Our focus through Gamers versus Cancer is to expand on what the community is, is currently engaging with through game developers, in addition to content streamers, establishing a presence at gaming events, creating an ambassador program, and securing hardware and software donations to expand our reach and give potential. This multi-pronged approach allows the gaming community to truly take ownership in the fight against cancer. We are tapping into opportunities to incorporate cause marketing as a major strategy for free to play games. And our, as I mentioned before, our partnership with Flowplay is a great example of this, which Derek is going to cover in greater detail now. So once you've found a charity that you uh, really are passionate for and your community is passionate for, um, it'd be easy to you know, start getting a fundraiser going in your game and just write a check to them. What I really recommend is that you partner closely with the charity that you've chosen. Uh, you'd be surprised how eager charities are to work with you and to work closely with you to create a really great event. Um, 
they know where their money is going and what the issues are that, and, and can help you identify very targeted fundraisers. Uh, it's my belief that a, a, you know just raising money for cancer or some other great uh, charity is fine, but if you can narrow it down to, to help people understand exactly uh, an issue that you're going to be dealing with and exactly where the money's going, uh, it's a much more successful campaign because people really get a, a better sense of the help that they're going to be creating through this program. Um, our two PR teams work really closely together. So we're creating social media events. We're creating um, PR releases both before and after the fundraiser. So it's great for you to get visibility both from the, the efforts of the charity you're working with and both from the, uh, the, you know, the PR that your own team is doing to announce what the, what, what the, what the event was and what the result of the event was. Uh, so four things to be sure, sure to do, uh, make sure you're highlighting a very specific cause um, and also get your creative team involved so that they can, uh, they can bring some of what you as the game company uh, can do to really make this successful. Um, you know, we're the creative people. Most of the times the charity people are not super creative. They, 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 have, a, they have a mission, they have things that they're working on. But it's, it's really up to you to come up with something super, super fun and super creative to engage the community. Um, we also are encouraging you to li uh, integrate a lot of this stuff into your live ops and your, uh, your game promotion calendar so that you're <clears throat> announcing what's going on and keeping people informed all along the way and allowing people in your game to uh, actually spread the word themselves. Uh, we keep these charity promotions live for about four weeks. Uh, because we're on a two-week sprint, and that seems to be about enough, enough time to have a really successful promotion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the keys to a successful fundraiser, I believe, are, as I said, make it specific. People want to know where's the money going to and, and how is it going to help people. Our most recent campaign was to provide hotel rooms for frontline workers um, so that these frontline workers that are working in COVID wards don't have to go home to infect their, their family or have a place to rest in between their shifts. So this, this really it was much better than just saying, hey, we're raising money for, uh, for frontline workers. It's like we are raising money for frontline workers because they need a place to stay in between their shifts. So that, that really brings it home. Uh, make it easy in the game. You know, buy this thing and this money, all the money you spend will go towards this charity. Uh, also, make it a benefit for the player. If you buy this thing, uh, make something in the game happen that benefits them so that they get a little uh, something back out of it as well. It's also really good if it's socially engaging, if there's a way for them to actually buy one for someone else to share that so that uh, if you're spreading the word and allowing them to, you know, share their um, phil phil philanthropy with other players in the game. And also make it, uh, it, it's really optimum if you make it easy, uh, either through chat or other mechanisms you have in terms of um, uh, chat boards and things where people can announce, hey, I'm part of this fundraiser and I want to get everybody else involved in it as well. Next slide. So Derek shared how to create a successful fundraiser. So I want to dive deeper into the why. We have an unparalleled opportunity to cultivate gaming as a platform for social good. Great games build communities that frequently connect and help with one another. By combining gameplay, emerging technologies, inspired talent, the commercial gaming industry can extend these communities to invoke monumental social change. Although not all nonprofits are, are the same, we create partnerships by looking at how we can help solve problems and achieve goals for both the organization and the brand. As the middle of the slide deck shows, by partnering with nonprofits, you can create value that actually aligns with your own priorities. Research suggests that 85% of Americans will switch to a product if the company supports a cause they believe in. And that figure jumps to 90% for millennials. The gaming industry's reach has the potential to address the world's most pressing issues. For us, partners allow us to help save more lives from cancer than ever before. With a 26% drop in cancer death rates in the United States since 1991, this, is ste this steady decline makes us even more determined to accelerate this progress. And it's important to note that while all 
of the overall cancer mortality rates are dropping, populations who are marginalized are bearing a disproportionate burden of preventable death and disease, meaning there is still more work to be done, meaning there is huge opportunity right, for us to be driving social good within the gaming industry. Partnerships within our organization through the industry itself demonstrate just one way at which the gaming industry has had a tremendous impact on driving social good globally. And now Derek is going to dig into exactly how our partnership has been implemented. Thanks, Daniel. I, I wanted to give you an example of what we did so it could sort of, you know, help you come up with some ideas for your own games and how you might integrate this kind of chari charity fundraising inside your products. Uh, in our game, this is a, our game called Vegas World. Uh, one of the major ways we make money is we sell people good luck charms. These charms, uh, if you purchase them, increase the odds of winning in the game. So if you're playing slots, if you're playing blackjack, any of our social casino games, you will win more coins back if you're using these lucky charms. So they're very popular. They drive about 85% of our revenue. So it's a, ma it's a major, major thing in, in our products. Next slide. Um, we also, through our uh, party system, allow people to group together and have parties in their hotel room in the game. Uh, and through this party board, they're able to create these events around the charity so that everyone in the community knows these events are going on and can easily click a link and go to the party and be part of this charity fundraiser. This is what it looks like uh, to be in a party in Vegas World. You see the avatars of all the players. Uh, there's chat. There's people buying these charms. And you see that people are actually in this room buying charms as we go. At a charity fundraiser uh, party, uh, people would be buying, the, the in the case of um, ACS, American Cancer Society charms that are distributed to everybody in the room. They buy one for themselves, but everybody else in the room gets one as well. And later when they go play the, the, the our games, our slots games and blackjack games, that gives them a benefit in the game. So it's super social. Uh, and this is just an example of where uh, the American Cancer Society charm was placed in our, in our purchase uh, merchandising. Um, it was 25 gems. You want to keep the price point fairly low so it's really easy for people to buy a lot of them and share them. If you, if you set the price point too high, uh, you know, you won't have a lot of activity, but what you want to create is like this sense of uh, a lot of activity, a lot of charms being purchased or a lot of whatever you're, you're building in your own game to make it feel like it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting and, and really um, interesting for everybody. So we just finished our most recent successful campaign. Uh, as I mentioned, we were working with, uh, the American Cancer Society has what's called the Hope Lodge. And while the Hope Lodge is a place for cancer patients to stay while they're uh, traveling to go for, for therapy and treatments, uh, during COVID-19 situations, it was temporarily switched to be used to allow frontline hospital workers to rest you know, remain uh, separated from their family so they didn't spread the disease to their family. So we did a specific fund fundraiser around this. Uh, so the reason I believe this is successful is, is super timely. Uh, COVID-19, this is this is run during May. So it was, it was, you know, obviously very timely during May. Uh, the players got bonuses for being part of this, for buying the charm for the Hope Lodge. They got benefits for their friends when they buy one for themselves. They get benefits for everybody else. And it was easy to share because everybody could create these parties where everybody could come and, and have a good time and supporting a great cause. Uh, the result of this was that we raised $55,000 just for this one campaign. 32% uh, of our MAU uh, went to one of these parties. So about a third of all players were engaged somehow in this fundraising effort. And literally 28% of our, our monthly active users actually made a monetary contribution toward buying these charms. Uh, so this is one of uh, many that we've done for the American Cancer Society. We've raised, I believe, I think it's over $300,000 for ACS so far. Uh, so we are super excited about continuing to do this. We're going to do another one uh, with a different um, fundraising angle uh, this October. 
All right, thanks, Eric. Uh, again, I think that it shows just how you're able to connect uh, an engagement activation for your own constituents and tying it directly to a mission effort, right? And that's that's where I think there is huge synergy in terms of being able to partner with the nonprofit. And so now we want to showcase how you can get more involved and what are some you know next steps. So first off, you can reach out to nonprofit partners. You can connect with if you already know that there is a cause that organizationally you they hold dear, near and dear, reach out to a nonprofit to see if there is the ability to uh, create an activation. If you don't have a nonprofit, you can reach out to us. <laughs> you could do a number of things, right? And then secondly, what you could do is you can also connect with your community, like what Derek was saying and how they approached it. Finding out what is near and dear to your community and aligning that cause through an activation for them. Secondly, and Derek mentioned this previously, you know, in, incorporate the creative and innovative way that you, that you have built out your own business and company and, and bring that to the nonprofit. If, uh, as Derek has mentioned, the nonprofit isn't necessarily going to have answers and how it is that they can engage the community, especially nowadays with a lot of nonprofits in the early stage of just looking to see how they can incorporate the community into their mission. And so a lot of times you're going to need to be that subject matter expert. Secondly, you're going to want to discuss goals early on. What are your priorities? How does it align? with the priorities of the nonprofit that you're gonna be connecting with. I think it's important to also note that nonprofits are also held by specific laws in terms of what they can and can't do within partnerships and understand that you know if you can't equate it to how you might have worked with a vendor in the past or how you might have worked with another business partner. It's, it's slightly different though not as much as you might think. But just wanted to preface that there might be differences in, in the two approaches when you initially start to have communication. And then last but not least, share the impact. You have created an activation, you've engaged your constituents, you've really been able to build out something and, and build it behind a cause, right? That's either important to you or important to your own constituents and share what that impact is after the activation has taken place. Derek, is there anything that you might want to add to this? Uh, I think the main thing I would add is that, you know, there's probably many people out there that are saying, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. We, we'd love to give to charity and, and uh, you know, get something going with our community around it. But you'll be, you'll be shocked and you'll be surprised that uh, what, what the real impact later is for you. Um, it, it's one thing to, uh, to just carry out a fundraiser and donate money. It's another when you start to see the feedback from your players, the appreciation that they have for the fact that you've, you've, you're, you're doing good and that you're helping the community. And the same thing with your employees. The, the feedback that you'll get from your employees is, is amazing as well. Great. So we've provided additional time for us to go through and look to see if there are any questions in the chat that we haven't been able to address just yet. Uh, I, I did have two questions for Derek to kind of build upon what it is that he's discussed earlier. So Derek, you talked about um, how it is that you went out and you connected with your community to find out what cause was near and dear to their hearts. You know, what are some best practices that you've seen over the course of the last couple of years in doing an activation like this that others could possibly take? Well, the, the surveys and, uh, you know, emails and having people respond uh, by electronic communication are great. And, but I was uniquely lucky in that we have a virtual world. So I walk around in it. Uh, most people know who I am. I have a, a, my name in the game is Digmania. So people say hi to me. They know I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of a popular guy. Uh, but my advantage there is that I get to actually talk to people in the game one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and, and talk to them about their stories. Uh, you know, if somebody sends me a message saying, hey, I, you know, cancer is very important to me. Uh, it's a charity that I support and would like to see you guys support. Uh, I can actually go in the game and talk to them about that and, and find out, you know, how has cancer touched your life and, and, and how can we, you know, create a campaign that, that's meaningful for you. Great. So my last question would be, how has the impact of driving a social good campaign through your business 
yeah, uh, impacted you at an individual level? Well, probably the, the biggest thing that's happened is um, I, I was asked a couple of years ago to, to join a group called the CEOs Against Cancer, um, part of the Washington group. Uh, and later this year in February, I actually became the chairman. So today I'm the chairman of the Washington uh, CEOs Against Cancer, uh, an organization that takes, you know, leaders around the state uh, to come together and, uh, and do big events and fundraisers to uh, try and make a contribution toward the, this important research and uh, the supporting the community of people that are the patients and the people that are dealing with the cancer issue. Great. All right, so with that, uh, we have concluded our session. We want to thank you so much for joining in the dialogue through the chat uh, and just uh, being a part of this session as a whole. We would love to hear, you know, in future state, if you ever do connect with a nonprofit and end up creating an activation, we'd love to hear from you. You could reach out to myself and Derek individually, or you could reach out to us at gamers versus cancer at cancer.org. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this.